Alright, welcome to another episode. Today we will again add two features that were requested in the comments. And the first one is the ability to add some slots to our inventory at runtime. So let's do that first. What you will need to do is go to your save games, inventory save. And here we will add a new variable called saved amount of slots, which should be an integer. Compile, save. After that, we will go to our inventory system, blueprints, BP inventory. Then let's go to our save inventory function. And here, before we save game to slot, we will drag off of the save game object and set saved amount of slots to the current amount of slots from our inventory. Then we will go to load inventory and right here before we load the pickup actors we will get the saved amount of slots and set the amount of slots of our inventory to that value. After that we will load the pickup actors, compile, save and now we'll add a new function which is called add inventory slots. We will need one input which will be an integer called amount. So how many do we want to add? After that get the amount of slots and also set it. Then we will search for plus, integer plus integer, connect the amount, connect it to the set amount of slots. Now we still have to generate the new slots. So what we'll do first is hide the inventory, then drag in the inventory widget and call generate slot widgets. And right after we generated them, we want to show our inventory again. Before we return. Compile, save and that's already everything we had to do for our function. You can now close the inventory. Now you have to think about when you want to call the function. So just to give you an idea, you could call that when you level up or you can add a back upgrade that will be sold by a merchant. But I will just add a key event for this. So let's go to our top down character. And let's right click somewhere and search for N or something, doesn't matter. Then we will get the inventory reference and call add slots, add inventory slots. And I will just plug in an amount of five new slots. So the thing is that we now modified the way we change and load the game. So if you already have a save file existing, you would have to delete them. If you forgot how that worked, just right click on anything in here, show an explorer. Then go to your project name, saved, and under the save games we have some .sav files here, you would have to delete them. Oh, there's one thing I forgot before we hide the inventory. We actually have to get our slots array and resize that by our new amount of slots. Then connect that to the execution and to the hide inventory call. Now we can compile save and if we play test now you can see that currently we have five rows of four slots each. When I hit N we now have one more row, the one slot that is left in the next row. And I can hit N once again, see that we added some slots again. Alright, that's it for resizing the inventory at runtime. Now another thing that was requested for our containers, so our chest, that when we open them that there are already items in there. And I will show you how to do that using data tables, just to show a different workflow. So we can close the game now. And let's actually go to our structures, blueprints, structures, right click, create a new blueprint structure, call that S underscore chest content, and double click. And in here we will first need the item class, 
which will be a BP Master item class. Then we will need a minimum amount, which will be an integer, and another integer called maximum amount. And finally, another integer called chance. So for each item that we will add to our data table later, we will define a chance. So, which will just be the percentage. For example, we could type in 70, and with a chance of 70%, we'll then have the item in our chest when we open it the first time. Let's close it now. And in our blueprints folder, create a new folder called data tables. So, by the way, if you've never worked with data tables so far, they're kind of like an array, so there are a list of elements, but the advantage is that you can work with them in a much more organized way than with arrays, and that you have access to them from every blueprint, and that you don't have to create extra variables for that. So let's right click here, and under miscellaneous, you will see data table, select that, and now we have to pick a structure for the content of our data table. For that we created our as chest content, hit OK and call that table underscore chest start items double click now to add an element you will have to go to the plus sign here add a new row to the data table so the row names really doesn't matter you could just type in the item name for example health potions then the item class will be health portion of course, minimum amount let's say 20, maximum amount 60, and with a chance of 50%. Then we can hit the plus sign once more. This time we will call the row sort, select our hero sort here, let's say that we will always have one sort in our chest, so minimum amount and maximum amount will be 1 and chance will be 100%. And finally we will add the last row that can be stones, select our item stone, minimum amount of 50, maximum amount of 90 and with a chance of 20% maybe. Now you could of course add more items to our data table here but that's just an example, so we will hit save, close the data table, and let's go to our blueprints again, to the BP storage. Here we will create a new variable called start items, so the items that are in our storage from the start, there will be a S inventory slot array, editable and exposed on spawn. Then we will go to the event graph, and on event begin play we will set the slots to the start items and then set the storage widget and resize it compile save now we also have to generate which items will be in our chest so and that we will do in our BP chest here let's add a new function called generate starting items. If you want to work with data tables you would have to right click somewhere, search for data table and call the function get data table row names. Then for the table select the chest start items table. Now you've got all of the row names of a data table. Then you can go into for each loop. And off of the array element, get data table row, select the same data table, connect it to the loop body. Then you can break the out row, so that will be the content at the row name basically. Break it here. Let's check whether our item class is valid. OP at a branch. And then right click somewhere and search for random integer in range, minimum of 1 and maximum of 100 and we will check whether the return value is less than or equal to our chance 
let's actually add an end and connect it to the branch. Then we need another variable starting items that will be a s inventory slot array again make that editable and expose on spawn then drag it in and we will add an element to that right click here and split the struct pin item class comes from our break chest content for the amount we will right click random integer and range minimum value will be the minimum amount and maximum the maximum amount then we will connect the return value to the amount of the add node and finally when our loop is completed let's return then go to the event graph right click event begin play so when our game starts we will first add a branch and off of the condition we promote that to a variable called generate starting items question mark make that boolean editable and expose on spawn as well and if it's true we will call generate starting items and now the last thing is to go to our on interact event when we spawn the bp storage we will have to connect our starting items array to the start items of the BP storage. Now we hit compile, save, can close it and then select our chest that we put into the level and you can check generate starting items here. If we hit play now and open it you will see that we have one hero sword in there. We can close it, go in once again and this time we have 42 health potions and a hero sword. Alright, that's working as it should. Maybe sometimes you don't want to have randomly generated items, but you rather want to have predefined starting items of the chest. So if you want to do that, you can uncheck the generate starting items and just add an element for our starting items array. For example, if we want that chest to always contain 80 pieces of wood, we would then select wood and type in 80 for the amount. If we then hit play and open it, you can see 80 pieces of wood. Alright, that's it for this video. In the next one we'll hopefully start with the implementation of the hotkey bar. And after the hotkey bar is implemented, I will try to wrap up the series. So if you have any ideas what the next series could be about, please post that in the comments. If you have further questions to the inventory system, feel free to ask them as well. But maybe I won't have time to do another video on that topic then. Alright, see you in the next one.